have my slides. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for logging on. This is Pediatric Grand Rounds, and I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Chris Landon, pediatric pulmonologist and also a man of many other works. Uh, he's going to be uh, introducing his team to talk about an important psychosocial intervention, uh, both on the individual scale and also for our communities. So thank you, Dr. Landon. Thank you, Andre. Uh, well, welcome to, to uh, Tuesday morning pediatric grand round or Wednesday morning pediatric grand rounds. I said Tuesday for about 25 years and then uh, they moved it around. So uh, there you have it. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, and I'll go through our introductory slides. Uh, Dr. Bob Ross, our pediatric activity medical director, uh, Cheryl Lambing and Victoria Yushenkov are the CME directors and coordinators. And uh, we did receive, as you'll see in the press release, a grant from ACES Aware from the state. Uh, and you'll see more of that uh, over the, the uh, weekend, I imagine. We really do want to involve, if you're involved in community groups uh, like Rotary, Kiwana, we really wanted to get the uh, information out there. And we are accredited for uh, continuing medical education. Uh, we are planning on also turning this into a maintenance of certification MOC uh, activity, and we'll be doing that with our uh, helpers over the next uh, uh, six months or so. So what is ACEs? So ACEs is Adverse Childhood Experiences. Uh, and what happened was when uh, uh, Dr. Harris became the Surgeon General for California, we've been looking at social determinants of health for a long time. ACEs has been out there for a couple of years, uh, and people will, will go to little weekend courses and the like. And what she said is, you know what, no money, no mission. How am I going to get doctors to do this? So through Medi-Cal, if you're a Medi-Cal provider, you'll actually be paid. So we're going to talk about the, the clinical aspects, the financial aspects, uh, and then uh, uh, also just the, the organizational aspects. How are we going to make this occur? Uh, we have uh, with us uh, uh, Mountain Kelly and on the uh, line also will be Mika Kazmar. Uh, Dr. Melissa Ruiz is going to step forward for just a second about uh, how they went through the operational aspects. We also have uh, a training online. Now, to get the financial aspect of it, uh, you do need to take a two-hour training. So I look at this the same way as there's a difference between Dell and Apple computer. They both sell computers. Uh, Apple, oh, we have a beautiful technologic gorgeous silver filled with uh, wonderful ways to connect you with technology. That's that's why they do it. How, how do they do it? They do it with engineers, brilliant engineers from around the world. What do they do? They sell computers. Dell, they sell computers. And we really want to get the why in the house. That's what we're going to talk about is it's, it's not just about taking a two hour test and getting paid, but there's a why to it. We'll also be going over uh, through first five through Tri-Counties Regional Center, uh, behavioral Health, uh, the Behavioral Health uh, uh, Pediatric Behavioral Health Collaborative, uh, headed by Daniel Shaw, uh, the other resources that are out there. Uh, Mary Ellen Dyer, I believe, is on the on the line as well. Uh, the uh, reason I became uh, involved about uh, well 30 years ago, uh, Dr. Paul Russell became the second pediatrician uh, in Ventura County, and Paul uh, was a little directionless at first. Uh, would follow me around and, and I said, well, Paul, uh, we need you to see patients, but we also, I, I, I want you to learn the, the uh, Board of Supervisors, behavioral health, everything. Uh, so pick a project. I, I, I don't care what it is, just pick something. And he had a father who had uh, burned his child, uh, who had broken the child's arms. And uh, uh, with our uh, social service system at the time, the man would disappear in Mexico and the child ended up murdered. Uh, by his father, and the father also left the country. This made Paul uh, quite upset, and so he went around uh, and started looking at grant sources. Uh, we ended up with uh, the first year he didn't get funded. He was very frustrated. The second year, uh, we uh, were com completely funded for a four-year program, which became uh, Healthy Families Ventura. We've been involved in uh, Moms and Kids Drug Recovery Center, uh, so that there's an aspect, not just of drugs, but also of what our own histories are like. What, why are we doing it? That's why. Uh, this is uh, partially a memory of Paul Russell. It's uh, to educate us about the social determinants of health, that there are things that need to go on besides just talking to someone on the phone about 
uh, the over the counter remedy for up to respiratory infection. Uh, much more than that. So we want all primary medical providers to implement universal screening for adverse childhood experiences and routinely use and understand the uh, ACEs and toxic stress. How not having food, how not having uh, uh, the ability to uh, uh, meet with other people, <coughs> to not have friends, not have people who can support you. How all these things affect diabetes and asthma and hypertension, uh, 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 premature birth. So we want to enhance the quality of patient care and health outcomes for you as well. So what are our resources? Through the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, Chapter 2, uh, headed by, by Adam Schickendunz from uh, uh, UCLA, uh, there is a, a collaborative, and we will be uh, filming lectures uh, uh, by this collaborative. Uh, these will be one hour uh, lectures. You'll get uh, CME credit for them. They'll be part of the maintenance of certification. Again, through Danielle Shaw, uh, we have the Pediatric Behavioral Health Collaborative, uh, and they are looking at resources. And it's it's really hard. Those of you who uh, go, gosh, I, I need a, a child psychiatrist. Uh, how do I do that? I have a patient in Simi Valley. What's it, where's the closest child psychiatrist? So we're really working hard if there is someone who is in uh, having difficulties. Uh, what can we do? With Tri-Counties Regional Center, I'm the medical director for Tri-Counties Regional Center uh, for the under three, uh, and what we're seeing is a great drop off of referrals. Uh, and why, why would that be? Well, children aren't being seen in clinic. Uh, so it's, uh, you're, not, you're not seeing a delay in speech. You're not seeing a delay in gross motor activity. You're not seeing uh, uh, the cognitive difficulties. We're not seeing the the patients who are at increased risk. Now, uh, through Gold Coast Healthcare Plan, uh, you do get paid for uh, participating uh, by doing the ACEs screening, and we'll uh, we'll talk about the mechanics of that. Uh, oh, since January, the last time I talked to them, there have been all of two bills submitted. Huh, two bills submitted. I think hopefully more than two patients were seen. So we need to mm -hmm. integrate this uh, uh, into our practice. And then Beacon, how do you properly use Beacon for the, the, uh, the referrals? Ventura County Behavioral Health, uh, and working with them, we want to make absolutely certain that uh, uh, we have the resources. And if it's a matter of training you uh, in the office, uh, then we need to do that. So really the biggest resource is you. So what are the, uh, the categories? So when we look clinically, uh, uh, well, let me actually uh, take a second to introduce my team. Uh, Victoria, can you turn the camera on so they can see Imani? Uh, actually, Imani, if you come up here. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to introduce uh, uh, one of our uh, coordinators. This is Imani Kelly. Uh, Imani, uh, I, I uh, had uh, spoken to her, uh, uh, gosh, back in March when she was in Spain, that uh, I really hope that this particular uh, project would move forward, uh, that, uh, that she brought an extraordinary experience having been a student scholar here. Uh, and so I'm going to let Imani talk just a little bit about uh, how she feels she can add in. Uh, okay. Poor yeah. thing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Imani Kelly. Um, so yeah, like Dr. Landon said, I, he, I reached out to him in, around March. Um, and so I'm joining this team, the project, for at least the summertime. Um, I was a previous summer scholar here a couple years ago before graduating um, in 2019 from the College of Worcester, tiny school that you probably haven't heard of. Um, I graduated with a degree in psychology and minors in Spanish and Latin American studies. And um, then this past year I was in Spain on my Fulbright scholarship uh, teaching English in Spain. So um, I have been working and been around uh, Ventura County health care for a long time, mostly through my dad, Dr. Kelly, um, who's the director of obstetrics. Um, so I'll be helping out mostly to facilitate and organize the trainings for providers and hopefully starting with my dad and convincing him to get his team on board. So <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you all. So that is the funny thing is how, as I was trying to, uh, we hadn't been funded yet. And so I reached out to uh, the head of obstetrics. I said, oh, you know about ACEs? And uh, he said, uh, what's that? I go, hmm, are you having uh, dinner with your daughter from time to time? Because she's been 
uh, very aware of this uh, and it did. I'm glad that you don't take medicine up at the whole thing. I, I walk with Dr. Starr who every Sunday shows me the most horrific wounds uh, I've ever seen. Uh, but what we talked about with Dr. Starr actually this last Sunday, I have uh, someone who does uh, uh, laughter yoga and like is what's what's the impact of having that wound? It's not just a matter of a wound. Uh, it's a wound on their life. It's a change in their life. And so how, how can we help them through this beyond just uh, it being a, a pus coming out of their abdomen? So if there are 10, uh, is Mika on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Hi. Uh, you have, are you, okay, Mika, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, sorry, I'm just plugging in my charger. My morning has been a little bit hectic, but... Um, <clears throat> But yes, my name is Mika. Um, I am just recently graduated from the University of California, Santa Barbara with a degree in communication and a minor in journalism. Um, I focus on healthcare communication and recently just did a thesis in mental health and doctor patient interaction. And um, I'm looking forward to going on the team and just trying to help coordinate different activities and programs and um, writing up any any final grants or um, parts of those grants. So I'm excited to be a part of this. And I think we've been talking uh, for a while now about ACEs just because of uh, my thesis so earlier this year. So I've been pretty well versed in what's been going on from then. So yeah, that's where I'm at. All right, so that's the team. Uh, what she uh, neglected to mention is that for uh, 30 years ago, her father was a resident uh, here in the family medicine program. Oh yes, uh, yeah, so. President. So I, I've had the, uh, I've been able to help both her sister and, and her uh, through their college experiences there. Uh, occasionally a hot meal from time to time, but uh, <laughs> really watching watching them grow up, uh, watching them gain the skills that I'm going to need. Uh, I'm I'm a technology person, but I don't know anything about TikTok dancing and Facebook and all that. So we're going to take all her creative uh, communication capabilities. Uh, and uh, apply them. Uh, also, uh, Miguel Cervantes, uh, uh, they both know you, uh, so Las Islas will definitely be a, uh, a target, and uh, Amani's uh, eyes are twinkling at the thought of uh, <laughs> what's going to happen there. Can you shut up for a mic? There we go. So uh, let's go over the, the clinical aspects. So really what we're looking at are the, the, the things that you're thinking about already. Okay, uh, adverse childhood experience, abuse. So am I being physically abused? So we learn everything there is to know about what a cigarette burn looks like, uh, that uh, if you're whipping somebody with a belt, you can see the belt mark on their back, what fingers look like. Uh, but there's emotional abuse too. Uh, and so we're seeing more and more uh, uh, reports of domestic violence. I have a friend who rides for the LAPD, uh, and it's uh, uh, just a, an epidemic down in Los Angeles. The referrals for emotional uh, abuse for children has decreased because nobody's seeing them. They're not being seen by their teachers. They're not being seen by their pediatricians, not being seen by their neighbors. Uh, and so uh, really taking the time uh, to know about this. I have uh, uh, someone who didn't... Uh, 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 the, the dog next door had diarrhea and, and uh, they made their yard smell. And so they said, oh, will you talk to your landlord? And then uh, uh, he replied, well, then all that screaming that you do at your children, perhaps I should report that as well. So uh, we really have tried very hard to help that, uh, that person get the resources she needs. Uh, and he is uh, uh, curbing his uh, dog a little better now too. But also sexual abuse. Uh, so uh, 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 trafficking, uh, uh, unwanted advances, uh, we really need to offer them through us uh, an opportunity. We have uh, uh, the signs about sexual uh, trafficking up in our emergency room so that if you're showing up to the emergency room and you're quiet, you can at least point to something uh, going on. So in terms of an adverse childhood experience, this goes on so that if you were 400 pounds and uh, and pregnant, uh, uh, and oh my God, what an awful person you are. Well, when I was raped when I was eight years old, you know, that's really affected my entire life. So we need to be asking these questions because it does impact uh, on lifelong health. Physical neglect. So right now we have housing difficulties. Uh, we've got fee, uh, food uh, uh, insecurity. If you 
uh, our, uh, I belong to Rotary and we donate our, instead of getting our chicken meal, since we're doing Rotary by Zoom, uh, not Microsoft Teams, but Zoom. Uh, uh, we fund, we help to fund the food banks and those food banks are now at 10 times uh, their, their uh, weekly uh, needs. And then emotional neglect uh, on it being able to support or who knows how you can help these children through. Uh, uh, I think as a parent, uh, I've seen a father uh, uh, make cleaning the garage 101, of course, uh, but the, the, you learn uh, the teachers are worth th their weight. I, I have uh, a mother said, gosh, uh, I think teachers are worth a billion, in fact, a billion dollars a day uh, for me to, to uh, take up these new activities, try and uh, coordinate everything, uh, help them through while they're staring off into space. Uh, can't we just put everybody on Ritalin or duct tape or something? So neglect, both physical and emotional, are a big part of the adverse childhood experiences. And then household dysfunction. So having someone in the house with mental illness, having uh, a mother who's being treated violently, a divorce, uh, an incarcerated uh, a relative, uh, substance abuse, and uh, uh, these are all problems that we uh, can access uh, if the uh, questions are asked properly, uh, getting these families resources that they need uh, in terms of, of, of substance abuse, uh, counseling. Uh, there are uh, uh, CASA, the child, uh, the child the court appointed uh, special advocates for children uh, uh, through the uh, Radio Indigena. Uh, we have uh, broadcasts in English, uh, Spanish, uh, Mixteco, and Zapotec, and, and so forth through the native languages. Worry really about the resources uh, uh, that are available uh, in in, in uh, the Oaxacan uh, uh, community. The, those who, who pick our strawberries and without whom uh, we wouldn't be eating. So we need to make certain that we're asking these questions, and that we're uh, by asking them that we feel comfortable in providing the resources. So how common are ACEs? Well, when I took the test, I go, gosh, my mother was in prison. I was in Guatemala, but she was in prison. Uh, we had problems with alcohol. Uh, my parents were divorced. Hey, ha what, what the heck? This is this must be uh, have a terrible toxic stress on, on my life. Uh, and I was very fortunate to have a family that, uh, 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 that I could go to uh, that uh, really helped me to understand that I could really learn anything. We built uh, radios and played music and but the resiliency is something that we also have to have and uh, so when we look at aces nearly two out of three adults have at least one ace uh, they have at least one adverse childhood experience their parents are yelling uh, the uh, uh, they were food insecure they were housing insecure their father lost their job things uh, so when we look at two out of three have at least one adverse childhood experience and then we look at the children at least half the children have at least one adverse childhood experience. So this is, if we don't ask these questions, again, it's not just about ear infections or sore throats or immunizations, or uh, it's also about how uh, our society uh, affects our health. So what's the, what's the cost of inaction? So uh, uh, what I found is uh, people actually become adults, it's all those uh, those creatures that start out unable to walk and unable to talk and incontinent of stool and urine, uh, they do grow up. Uh, and if we don't watch uh, uh, them as young people, uh, what we'll see is growth delay. And we see this through our Tri-Counties Regional Center, uh, cognitive delay, uh, sleep disruption, and all these have uh, mal effects uh, in childhood. Uh, what we know about sleep difficulties, for example, in, in school is that children are falling apart, falling asleep at school uh, if you have obstructive sleep apnea. Uh, but also if you have no sleep because people are screaming or coming in at night or uh, are worried about finances, uh, those things will affect your school as well. It's not just a matter of learning math. We have to have a, 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 a place where children feel safe and they should feel safe at home as well as at school. Then uh, in terms of the social determinants of health, I get referrals all the time. Dr. Landon, they just they won't take their medicines. They don't take it no matter. Oh, my gosh, their asthma is out of control. Well, gosh, did you ask what their what home was like and how we can do it? It's not just a matter of a, uh, a spacer device. Uh, we really need to uh, uh, work on that with infection and the, the methicillin resistant staph aureus that just spreads through a family or lice or scabies or whatever. 
uh, we need to have uh, a childhood environment uh, of safety. Uh, learning difficulties, you talked about behavioral problems. Uh, uh, Dr. Evans, who is our psychologist uh, 25 years ago, uh, as oh gosh, everybody needs to be on, on, on medication, ADHD. They all have ADHD. And it goes, no, they have ODD. Uh, and ODD is oppositional defiant disorder. And if the way you get attention in a house is to knock a cup off the table and someone reaches out and hits you, at least you're getting some attention. Why well, he didn't get me a beer. Well, he's 18 months old. You can't knock him across the place. So behavior, you, you learn, it's a learned behavior. If the reward you get is any kind of attention, uh, then you're going to end up with behavioral problems. And then, of course, as we move into uh, uh, adulthood, uh, we've talked a little bit about the problems of obesity, uh, uh, bullying, uh, teen pregnancy. We worked with uh, a school on the avenue. Uh, there was a middle school where the pregnancy rate was 15%. This is a middle school. And so where do you start? We started in third grade. I started teaching about uh, uh, respect uh, between uh, men and women, boys and girls. Uh, so if you don't ask these questions of how, how did you end up pregnant as a teen, uh, what, what adverse childhood experience, why did you feel like you needed a baby to fill that emotional gap? Uh, Oh, another teen pregnancy. Oh, it's going to be a bad outcome. Oh, they're, they're, we've got to work on it uh, prior to that. And that's what the ACEs is all about. So hopefully, like myself, uh, not all individuals experience toxic stress as a result of negative experiences. So uh, we look there, we see what we see is resiliency. So what we need is those positive supports. Uh, we need good access to good nutrition. We need access to school. We need access to uh, support systems. Uh, even if our parents uh, uh, are emotionally abusive, physically abusive, in prison, drugs in the house, uh, that is, it is possible. This is not that you're condemned uh, to life because of the, uh, these negative experiences in your home. Okay, well, is it a big problem? Oh, no, so how could it be a big problem? Well, if you're looking at 61.7% of Californians have more than one ACE, 17.6 with more than four ACEs, uh, now we're starting to look at some real problems. And how, how is it divided up? Oh, is it just, it's all inner city, that must be it. Oh, it's all, uh, it's all in the barrio. Well, no, it's really spread throughout. Uh, so uh, Asian Pacific Islanders, uh, Hispanic, Latino, African American, or black, white, uh, we're all at risk. So it's not just, again, a hidden, uh, it's a hidden, we can't just point our fingers uh, it's, it's a hidden crisis and something that we need to approach uh, really for all uh, of California. So you're looking uh, here, Ventura County. Uh, we don't see the, the Channel Islands there, uh, but we're not without uh, our problems with ACEs. OK, well, it's adverse childhood experience, not a problem. We're all built physiologically. We have hearts, we have lungs. Uh, uh, you know, really, how, how can how can that be a problem? Well, with odds ratios, what happens if you have more than four ACEs, you're looking at twice the amount of heart disease, twice the amount of cancer, twice the amount of 2.6 times the amount of accidents, uh, chronic lower respiratory disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, <clears throat> diabetes, uh, kidney disease, and then suicide attempts. So we put in a special center here in Ventura County over in Camarillo to really uh, help, help people out. We have Casa Pacifica. Uh, uh, Dr. Bob Rao gets uh, all our drug overdoses. Now we have a pediatric intensive care unit, so we have the opportunity to help people through. But just getting them through an acetaminophen overdose isn't enough. I mean, if you take one aspirin and you think it will kill you, uh, you need this is you need some help. So uh, we need to be able to offer those resources. So ACEs are not destiny. With intervention, we can make a significant impact and improve outcomes. So with that, uh, if we're going to invest in adverse childhood experience screening and intervention, we also need to see it at the other end, that the teen pregnancy is down, that diabetes is down, that asthma is better controlled through, uh, uh, through better adherence, that school performance is better, uh, that oppositional defiant disorder is, is uh, 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 less of a problem, that parenting uh, is uh, 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 something that results in a positive relationship in the family. So they're not destiny. They are, they are, there is the possibility to intervene. 
So let's look at financial. Hey, we're going to get paid. So uh, the ACEs Aware initiative, our, our uh, Surgeon General was very smart. Uh, uh, as a physician, she understands no money, no mission. And so we've talked about ACEs for years now, and you, uh, all the Tri-Counties Regional Centers and the Gold Coast have gotten little lectures from people who've been uh, uh, paid to, to give a lecture series and so forth. But until you get everybody's attention, uh, it's, it's just, it's been difficult to move it forward. And that's really why we were funded, uh, is this is a provider education initiative, and we have to look at different ways. I don't know uh, how, how to do this. We did this with COPD, uh, with the, with the, we had our COPD access to community health uh, grant, and uh, all you had to do was watch a one hour video, answer six questions, and you could get paid really up to one, one physician ended up with $23,000. And I couldn't get anybody to watch it. I go, oh, okay, well, that's a problem. Let's break it into 10 minute videos. Okay, uh, well, I got, I think, six or eight. Uh, I think Fran Larson's out there somewhere. Uh, uh, at least uh, we got uh, our retired physicians to watch it. Uh, and then I think they passed around the answer sheet and uh, suddenly it was done. So we really need people to take this course. Our original plan uh, was to have uh, uh, computers. Uh, you all brought, brought in your laptop. I'd feed you pizza uh, and we'd have a nice lecture. We'd have the ability for 20 people to interact uh, and talk about their, their different experiences. And we have to try and duplicate that. So that's, uh, that's what Amani and that's what uh, Mika and I will be uh, working on. Uh, again, we'll be filming and having embedded materials from the experts from the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, from this ACES uh, committee, of which uh, uh, Dr. Ruiz is uh, a member. So we're going to offer uh, Medi-Cal providers training, clinical protocols, uh, payment, payment uh, for screening children and adults. So the children can be screened multiple times in a year. The, the adults uh, uh, will be paid for uh, once a year screening, but that's across the, across the board. Your plastic surgeon, you could get paid, but you have to take that, uh, take the course. And Amani and Mika will be on your shoulders with a, a riding crop helping you to understand you need to complete the course. And we've got to figure out a way to do it. Uh, and whether it's going to be uh, when you're done, you get to do a TikTok dance with them, or I, I, I don't know how we'll do it, but we're going to find a way. And also providing the resources. That's what we'll be working on heavily so that uh, if, if there's someone does score in the high range, that we can uh, complete that. So again, what are the benefits? Well, uh, by screening, we can better determine the likelihood of patients is that get increased health risk due to a toxic stress response. So uh, every week I have someone sent in for dysfunctional breathing or vocal cord dysfunction when there's finals. Uh, I think I don't, uh, Mika may even have done this, certainly in her research, uh, she showed it without a doubt. Uh, uh, people will hyperventilate. They pass out at school, in the hall. They're brought in by ambulance. Their hearts are beating out of their chest. They can't feel their, their fingers. They can't feel their lips. Their brains are working fast. And that's your sympathetic nervous system just going wild. Uh, so how can we uh, decrease that toxic stress? And again, on, on uh, Saturday nights, uh, we have an international laughter yoga. And what we do is uh, uh, we laugh. So we have the COVID laugh. We <laughs> we have the mask laugh as you're putting on your mask, you're smiling as you're putting on your mask. So all those stressful experiences that happen to us as health professionals, we have to decrease that toxic stress. I use, and in fact, I may make this a, a giveaway. I use a, a rubber chicken that's, that screams. Uh, and it, uh, one of our uh, staff here, uh, if you say the words, he, he, ho, ho, ha, three times, you smile. Well, I have to tell you, cortisol goes up. Your sympathetic nervous system decreases with those words. So it's something simple and clinic. It's not that you have to have them lie down and talk about their childhood. For heaven's sakes, they're children. Uh, but uh, we need to talk to the adults and make certain that they can decrease their stress response for themselves so that they're not screaming at their children. So we can then better identify those ACE-associated health conditions that can benefit from this trauma-informed intervention. Uh, and then vertical transmission. I mean, we... Uh, I have uh, uh, a friend who is visiting from uh, uh, Thailand. She's an Australian citizen. She's now in Australia. She's in a hotel. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you, if she leaves her room, uh, it's a $20,000 fine. And, and uh, there are police who will put her back in her room. She's there for 14 days. The Australian government's paying for this luxury hotel with a view of the river and three meals a day and so forth. Uh, 
but they don't want to have COVID in their community. Well, ACEs is a little harder. It has vertical transmission, just like any infectious disease. Uh, and so we need to target that, target the, the parent, target the child, target the relatives, uh, target the community to make certain that we're working together as a community. And then the, the patients themselves, we need to empower them so they can achieve better health by addressing this potential toxic stress physiology. Now on Thursdays, I know the first day, uh, uh, Dr. Amy David and uh, one of our family medicine faculty uh, had mindfulness training. And I, I, uh, the first time out, there were 54 people there. By the end, I think there was uh, myself, uh, my uh, visitor from Thailand, uh, and, and a couple other people. And they were excellent in terms of, uh, of learning relaxation techniques, of spending that time for yourself in this stressful time. Uh, and that's what we need to be able to, to teach and give those resources for people who have uh, toxic stress. Okay, so we're, we're coming up on you pretty soon, Melissa. Uh, so training and payment. So here's the thing. Here's, 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 here's the how, why, what do we do? We build community. We need you to go to www.acesaware.org. On there, there's the, the training. You sign in when you're done with the training, which takes took me an hour and a half to do. So it's that's, that part's annoying, which is why Imani and Mika will be uh, helping you along. I have enough funding. I think that I can send a pizza uh, to you in your home uh, while you're taking the training. If we can't do this, uh, we can do this training together, which is what we'll be talking about later this morning, that we could do a Zoom or, Zoom or Microsoft Teams uh, group training. So that everybody's in the room and can share experiences over a two hour period of time while they're having, I, I don't think I can, do beer, uh, but while they're while we're ha having some a meal together and can share experiences, so we'll work on this so that you can get certified. But if you can go to www.acesaware.org uh, and at least uh, take a look around, you'll see the resources are there, uh, the screening tools are there, uh, but also the the coursework itself. So uh, free CME two-hour training to learn about ACEs, screening tools, trauma-informed care. And there's cases, there's obstetric cases up there. There's a, 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 a child with asthma. There's a number of cases that you uh, work your way through. And then the in-person trainings will be offered in 2020. Well, uh, that's, we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, if everybody could please wear a mask downtown Ventura uh, when you go and uh, uh, walk and shop around down there. Uh, we finally, thanks to the medical staff here, we're able to get that through the city council, and I appreciate that no end as a person at great risk. Okay, so on the operational side, uh, we also need to give you uh, the resources and support. So uh, I'm going to have Melissa come up and just talk a little bit. Uh, they uh, used a summer scholar last year, uh, and we're able to uh, get uh, the ACEs screening at least uh, started. So Melissa? Hi, good morning. I'm going to stand a little bit away from the mic because I project very well, so I'm sure I would be a super spreader, so I wear my mask all the time. I did. I have been interested in ACEs for many years, and I feel I've actually done a grand rounds on ACEs, um, and this is something I've been working on since my chief year in residency, so I've been trying to figure out how to make this work in a workflow, and I know that's uh, one of the biggest challenges for anyone interested in doing this. Another uh, challenge was funding, but now there's funding. Uh, and so what I did with the Summer Scholar last year was actually have him introduce the ACEs screening because you really have to have someone follow a, a script uh, and that's all gone over in, during the training. Uh, and he was able to uh, present it to the family. And my biggest takeaways from that, guys, is that the families were very, very okay with taking it. They uh, accepted that this was part of their medical history. Uh, and actually, a number of them, if not the majority of my families, appreciated that we were asking these, these questions. Uh, in fact, it brought up a couple unmet social needs. I had a family uh, end up telling me they were about to be evicted. Uh, so we were able to kind of help mobilize uh, some resources so they wouldn't become a homeless family. And I think that uh, just making it 
uh, standard, really, really doing universal screening takes away any stigma. Uh, and it also takes away that sense that um, this is separate from medicine. Of course, this is part of medicine. This is, uh, you know, as Dr. Landon was alluding to, uh, adherence to medications has to do with how much, you know, if you have your food on your plate and you have a place to live. Uh, so I absolutely think um, we need to be doing this. I think another key piece, and I think Dr. Lynn will talk about this, is we have to train our staff. And that's where I, we a little bit with all the changes we've gone through in our clinics uh, are struggling with figuring out how to get a staff training done so we can really do this universally in our clinic. Uh, because our staff have, as ACEs are prevalent, I know I have ACEs, I know my staff has ACEs, and we can't just start giving this out to our patients without really training our staff on uh, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what builds resilience, because we want to help our staff be resilient as well. We don't want to re-traumatize our staff while we're trying to help patients. So we need to make sure we train our staff um, before you kind of blanketly start um, screening in the clinic. So that's something we're out figuring out, and hopefully with our lessons will um, be able to help train everybody on how to do it in their own space. Thank you, Melissa. So uh, Dr. Terry Cho uh, agrees that this is something we need to do. So that means the medical directors will be uh, slowly but surely will meet with the appropriate people, the directors of the clinic. One of the things that, that uh, Melissa didn't talk about uh, uh, when you introduce it to the staff, our staff has ACEs too. Uh, if you look at all all the problems that, that that can occur, and so uh, as you'll see in the in the training, sometimes you have a nurse who just can't seem to make that meeting. Well, when you start, if you ask her what her adverse childhood experiences were, it adds up to some pretty toxic stuff. So we need to be able to support our staff as this is in place because there'll be reverberations. So this this is a a frequency that uh, will get their their own. Uh, uh, experiences and current experiences and experiences of, of uh, uh, their families. And that's where we want, this is the rock we're throwing into the pond. So we want this to spread out throughout the community. I'll be giving this lecture to our Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis. Uh, we have uh, a home uh, for uh, women who've been previously homeless and uh, they're in a motel with their children. They're being reunited after the school came out and saw their child was leaving through the back door of the car. Uh, they were taken away. And so how can we reunite them? How can we uh, uh, help these uh, uh, people in their their experience? But again, it's, it seems simple. It's just a what? Uh, just take the test, give them. OK, here's your resources. But it's it's complicated. There's there has to be a why. Why are we doing this? We're doing this to improve our communication with our patients uh, and improve their health. So through uh, this grant uh, and through uh, 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 up and down California, uh, Mani and Mika are going to have many friends to talk this over with. They'd go, oh, crazy Dr. Lenny's asking to do this. Oh my God, my crazy doctor is asking us to do that too. Uh, so, uh, but we'll also get them uh, what I hope to be as a stepping stone to their careers. And that is, they'll meet people from the California Healthcare Foundation. They'll, we'll, we'll do our best to send them up to Sacramento to meet uh, with our Surgeon General, uh, meet with our public health. So that if there is a next step in their career, if they don't work for me forever, uh, then uh, uh, we they, they have this background. Uh, we'll also be uh, uh, teaching them about uh, quality improvement, and uh, that'll be part of it too. We'll have a, a global aim, a specific aim, a plan, do, study, act, PDSA. Life is just a PDSA. Uh, so as we move this through, uh, I really look at teaching them and, and mentoring them in their, their advancement and uh, learning operationally how to put things in place. Okay, so you all are, I'm sure, are already online at uh, acesaware.org and have started uh, uh, your training and getting your CME credits, uh, and we'll uh, work from there. So again, uh, so what are the benefits of screening? Uh, uh, other way, that's fine. Okay, well, let's go over the, the questions. So I've, I've tried to blow them up, and I'll just uh, talk them aloud. So on the, uh, the first is, uh, this is uh, for a child. Is to be completed by the caregiver, and so uh, here's the here's the uh, the questions part one and part two. Uh, so, has your child ever lived with a parent or caregiver who went to jail or prison? Hmm. Uh, do you think your child ever felt unsupported, unloved, and or unprotected? Has your child ever lived with a parent caregiver who has a mental health issue, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorder? Has a parent or caregiver ever insulted, humiliated, or put down your child? 
Has the child's biological parent or any caregiver ever had or currently has a problem with too much alcohol, street drugs, or prescription medication use? Has your child ever lacked appropriate care by any caregiver, not protected from unsafe situations, not cared for when sick or injured, when the resources were available? Has your child ever seen or heard a parent caregiver being screamed at, sworn at, insulted or humiliated by another adult? Or has your child ever seen or heard a parent caregiver being slapped, kicked, punched, beaten up, or hurt with a weapon? Has any adult in the household often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or thrown something at your child? Or has any adult and child ever hit your child so hard that your child had marks or was injured? Or has any adult in the household ever threatened your child or acted in a way that made your child afraid that they might be hurt? Has your child ever experienced sexual abuse? For example, anyone touched your child or asked your child to touch uh, that person in a way that was unwanted or made your child feel uncomfortable or anyone ever attempted or actually had oral, anal, or vaginal sex with your child? Have there ever been any significant changes in the relationship of the status of the child's caregivers? Uh, divorce, separated, romantic partner moving in or out. So yeses get you a point. Okay, and here's our second. So has your child ever seen, heard, or been a victim of violence in your neighborhood, community, or school? Targeted bullying, assault, or other violent actions, war, or terrorism? Now, I have to tell you, when I had an asthma camp some 20 years ago, uh, we were sitting around the campfire, and I said, oh, gosh, you know, we're, a lot of you are from La Colonia. How many of you have ever heard a gunshot? And uh, all of them raised their hands. How many of you have heard a gunshot this week? About half of them raised their hands. How many of you have had a gun fired in, in which it hit your house? And uh, we had two kids uh, that happened to you. Now, when I was at Cesar Chavez Elementary School, we were working on, on shutting down the drug dealers uh, and the, who, who lived on the street across from Cesar Chavez, and I was shot at. So uh, how, what kind of an environment can that be? So when we took a look at asthma, we looked at violent crime, and we looked at the, the epidemic of inpatient asthma, uh, and son of a gun, if their addresses didn't go right over where the police uh, had identified violent crime. So we became involved with uh, the initiative in Oxnard uh, to put in a curfew. Uh, people weren't allowed to put on Dallas Cowboy uh, uh, license plates and uh, uh, flags on their on their houses uh, silly stupid things until they brought me to a house where this grown man uh, had dallas cowboy sheets and he had uh, 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 ak-47s and uh, 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 pistols that had the serial numbers uh, worn off so that's an environment in which you are constantly under stress your sympathetic nervous system is constantly being battered and drained you just get adrenal exhaustion so so yes Violence has a lot to do with, with asthma, not, not just the uh, lack of adherence. Okay, so has your child ever experienced discrimination? So Oaxaca Citas, that was our big program, uh, gosh, probably about five years or so ago, and it continues to be a problem because the children who are the children of the farm workers who pick your strawberries are short, and they don't speak Spanish, and they don't speak English. So they, they discriminate against. So we had uh, uh, Sandy Young, uh, uh, started started this up at Las Islas and continued in Margaret. Uh, it's now with uh, Arsenio Lopez, uh, the Mistaco program. And so we'll be very involved with MyCop uh, and, and, turn, and through through uh, uh, Miguel Cervantes. So hassle, made to feel inferior, excluded because of their race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, learning dis differences or disabilities. Has your child ever had problem with housing? Have you ever worried that your child did not have enough food to eat or that the food for your child would run out before you could buy more? Has your child ever been separated from their parent or caregiver due to foster care or immigration? Has your child ever lived with a parent or caregiver with a serious physical illness or disability? And has your child ever lived with a parent or caregiver who died? All these things, again, affect health, and these are the questions that we need to ask beyond just upper respiratory infection. Now, for the teens, uh, we finally, through Cerner, uh, are able to have a, a, a separate private uh, a record. And again, the teens at this point are allowed to uh, ask these questions. So these questions are in English uh, and, and Spanish, they're in Farsi, they're in Armenian, they're in, in every language uh, uh, through the resources on acesaware.org. Uh, uh, but having the ability to uh, uh, let someone know that I've been screamed at, sworn at, insulted, uh, push, grab, throw, so forth. So the questions are, uh, are, are much the same. 
and adults too. Again, as it turns out, those those creatures who are incontinent of stool and urine and uh, unable to walk and talk intelligibly uh, do become grown ups. Uh, and so this is the uh, uh, adverse childhood experience questionnaire for adults. And it's again, much the same. Uh, did you uh, feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes or had no one to protect or take care of you? Uh, uh, did you lose a parent through divorce, abandonment, death, or other reason? Did you live with anyone who was depressed, mentally ill, or attempted suicide? Did you live with anyone who had a problem with drinking or using drugs, including prescription drugs? Did your parents or adults uh, in your home ever hit, punch, beat, or threaten to harm each other? Did you live with anyone who went to jail or prison? Did a parent or adult in your home ever swear at you, insult you, or put you down? Did a parent or adult in your home ever hit, beat, kick, or physically hurt you in any way? Did you feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were special? Did you experience unwanted sexual contact, such as fondling? So all these things, again, these are from their own childhood. Once a year, uh, uh, this, can, this is part of uh, uh, the screening uh, that occurs with, uh, uh, with your adult visits, be it urology, obstetrics, internal medicine, family medicine. Uh, we sh uh, should be asking these questions everywhere because, again, they affect uh, your health. The other thing is just the impact of telehealth. So uh, we we're talking uh, earlier about the, the referrals for Tri-Counties Regional Center being decreased. So as we're doing more telehealth, yeah, it does uh, potentially give us access. I have seen a cattail uh, in the background. I've seen uh, a mother smoking uh, behind the wall. And uh, unfortunately, she, or fortunately for me, she uh, blew the smoke out uh, into the room so I could see it. So we are invited in, although what I tell my patients is, uh, uh, if I look in your bedroom window at night, you call the police and I have to wear an ankle bracelet and I can't go around elementary schools for a couple of years again. So uh, we, we do have access into people's lives. Uh, so really bringing during a telehealth visit, incorporating uh, uh, these five questions. Oh, hey, these are tough times. It's difficult for everyone, uh, uh, particularly stressful for, for children who have more complex medical needs. What are the things that are most difficult for you and your child? We need to ask this. What do you do when you feel really overwhelmed, anxious, scared, frustrated? Do you have any outlets that are helpful or you just need to hit the pause button and calm yourself down? So teaching mindfulness, you can do this uh, over telehealth or give them the resources. What are the specific things that worry you about most now? Hey, housing, food, uh, anything new since COVID? Uh, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Even small little things that recharge your battery. Uh, uh, tea, just taking time for tea or, or walking. Or uh, I have, I have uh, uh, one, one patient who I became physically ill because it, during the entire visit, I thought she had a, a, a belt tied to a fan over her head. She's just going around and around in, in, in circles. So, but she needed to walk. And then what types of behavior have you noticed in your children that may be different than usual? The screaming, the things that can uh, bring things out. So we need to ask these during telehealth as well as the in-person visit. Okay, so what's the screening workflow as, uh, as we come up on the uh, end here? So first is you have to administer the tool. So what are the roles? Well, they're generally the medical assistant, and then we have it completed by the parent, caregiver, or patient if they're over the age of 13. Then we review the results, assess for symptoms. So the primary care provider answers the patient or family questions, gathers additional information, and then determining next steps. So for, for this is the what. Uh, so what's the course of action, anticipatory guidance, warm handoff to a mental health care professional or another, someone else, and then documenting an electronic health care record. Now, I've seen uh, probably five big health care records. Ours doesn't currently have a downloadable ACE form. We'll work on that with IT. Uh, how we uh, document the ACE score, it's going to have to go at this point into the, uh, into the node and what the intervention in, uh, will need to go into the plan. But we'll work on this. So what are the scores? So if you I don't know if you remember the questions here, uh, but if we've uh, got the low risk score of zero, no symptoms, well, anticipatory guidance on ACEs and toxic stress, uh, intermediate risk, uh, one to three, uh, no symptoms. Uh, we have anticipatory guidance on ACEs, toxic stress. Uh, talk about brief interventions, uh, enhanced surveillance that you're watching out. High risk score of four and above with or without symptoms, we knew besides the the uh, education and anticipatory guidance uh, talk about symptomatologies talk about uh, what it's like to have an anxiety attack uh, talk about how to protect yourself uh, how to reach out to others 
uh, and then offer the integrated behavioral health services. Uh, up in pediatrics, we have uh, social workers, we have a child psychiatrist, uh, we try within uh, the clinics to try and have these uh, cycle these these resources as well. So here's here's my concern again from the Tri-Counties Regional Center. Uh, if the ACE score is high, a developmental screening is definitely indicated. So refer to Tri-Counties Regional Center. If that if they're under uh, uh, a high score, their risk, as we saw earlier, uh, for developmental delay is higher. So. Uh, should it, uh, the developmental screening reveal delay, uh, cognitive, communication, social, emotional, self-help, uh, referral to the early start program uh, for more uh, detailed evaluation. So we can do the ASQ. And again, if we're seeing high ACE, ASQ a problem, good grief, get them uh, out to the uh, early start offices and these are the, the phone numbers. Okay, and then anticipatory guidance and patient education. So really, uh, through the ACEs uh, AWARE program, we'll be having handouts, toolkits that will be available uh, to you. Uh, Amani and, and uh, Mika will be helping with these. And these are on building resilience, uh, nutrition, uh, and exercise. So uh, uh, what is ACEs screening? What is toxic stress? What is self-regulation? Uh, so that you can ha have a, a handout to give, but uh, just slowing the car down and throwing a hand out at the, out the window at 35 miles an hour, it's really not what we need. So. Uh, we'll work uh, with your staff and with you as well on really some some basic uh, uh, techniques. So again, what can we do? Uh, we start with early detection, uh, medical treatment. We want to provide appropriate medical management. We're really working on healthy relationships, sleep, nutrition, exercise, mindfulness, and if. Uh, uh, getting the resources that they need. So we, we want to enhance the protective factors. We want to eat right, sleep right, exercise, mindfulness, healthy relationships, so that we can modify whatever risk factors there are and connect it to this therapeutic intervention. I think that's the end. Not advancing. So be that as it may, uh, again, uh, we'll be working on uh, how to institute this. We'll do this uh, uh, at the Pediatric Diagnostic Center. Probably, uh, I'm hoping by July, we'll be able to take a look at what the requirements are. Uh, through Amani and Mika, uh, you'll be uh, uh, contacted uh, and we'll work on, on this. Uh, Amani uh, has to leave now because this is her last day as a Fulbright Scholar. So she's going to run out of the room and, and uh, and meet with them. All right. Uh, since I think it's a little difficult, is there a chat box where people can ask questions? Uh, everybody, you may now unmute yourselves and um, go ahead. And if you have any questions, please. Hi, Chris. This is Bob. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, hi. Um, you touched on this, but I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the way in which these um, adult childhood um, or these adverse childhood experiences affect control of chronic disease. And I'm particularly thinking about uh, compliance um, when it comes to you know complicated illnesses like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, uh, where we see no compliance. I don't think I've ever thought to look at the person's uh, background. Well, thank you, Bob. So uh, since I see COPD patients, you see the, the, the rheumatology uh, uh, patients. Uh, you know, what we notice, uh, as particularly with people who have had adverse childhood experiences, they can't seem to quite make it to the appointment. Uh, they can't make it to the pharmacy. Uh, they don't get their refills on time. Uh, and so uh, they don't have a social network to support them. Uh, and all these, uh, have been affected by their experiences as a child. So by when we uh, uh, identify this, we need to be cognizant, to, you know, much as you are now, and I, and I really appreciate, you know, th that uh, here you are with as much experience as, uh, if not more than I, uh, in dealing with patients that we just didn't, we don't think about this, that 
This is an adult grown human being. For heaven's sakes, can't you dress yourself? Can't you keep feed yourself? Can't you exercise? Uh, can't you just take your drugs? Uh, and so by being uh, uh, by being aware and really working on on resiliency and uh, uh, mindfulness uh, by finding a way to calm them down so that they have time. Uh, when uh, I have a patient who doesn't uh, come into clinic, uh, usually uh, it's because, well, the next my sister-in-law was fighting with my brother and so I couldn't make it to the visit. Uh, or uh, my battery, I, well, I think Dr. Arzmendi is out there somewhere. She'd been so long since she'd driven her car uh, that her battery went dead. Uh, and whether this has to do with the amount of stress that uh, that we have a, a, as as caregivers as well. So, uh, so yes, those are the resources uh, that. So not only just thinking about screening, but providing the the, the uh, resources so the patients uh, can learn about mindfulness. My uh, wife uh, would go to a happy place uh, uh, when she was in the doctor's office. She would close her eyes, and she would be in a cabin in Alaska. She had a wolf uh, way uh, guarding the door. She had a gas lantern over her right shoulder and she'd be reading a book. Uh, and then when they called her name, she'd open up her eyes and there she's back. So we, we needed to, to, to help the patients find their happy place, their ability to, to calm down, uh, because I think you're exactly right, Bob, their adherence to medication uh, as their lives are in order uh, uh, will improve. And, and again, it's not just about, about drugs. All right, well, I see what we've Chris, come. Chris, yes, yes. It's oh, Fred boy. Larson, can you hear me? Yes, Fran. Uh, it sounds like this program is primarily, or maybe only, with the uh, physicians and care uh, uh, takers of Ventura County to um, Medi-Cal. Is that right? It's not part. Of, how do the private physicians work into this, or can they? Uh, the uh, for me the the bill only goes to um, uh, Medi-Cal. So if you have a Medi-Cal patient. That's where the, the payment comes from. I don't think that Blue Cross, Aetna, uh, Ventura County Healthcare Plan, Valley Care, Valley Care Select, uh, I don't believe that they've uh, included this as a billable item at this point. Uh, can But can private physicians not associated with the county yeah. uh, do the training and and the other aspects of the program? Yes. Uh, for oh, oh, heart be still. Yes, Fred. For heaven's sakes, acesaware.org. And you're going to see this uh, the, these trainings up and down the, the state, but uh, we're really, we're concentrating on Ventura County. Uh, I'm a member of the American Academy of pa Pediatrics uh, Chapter Two. I'm the I think senior advisor or something. Uh, there is an ACES uh, uh, committee, and uh, the the materials and pro and and process that we come up with here in Ventura County, which is advanced, I think, over the rest of the state, will spread. Uh, I'm going to be talking about ACES at uh, my Rotary Club uh, because I uh, again I think. As we all become aware as the society of the impact uh, of food insecurity and homelessness and uh, uh, worries about the economy. Uh, so, so yes, yes, you can take it. Yes, you get your CME. Uh, yes, you can get MOC. And if you have a Medi-Cal patient, uh, yes, you can build Gold Coast health care plan. Well, with the uh, I know the middle schools in particular, because my wife is retired as a middle school teacher. Uh, we're very much tuned into the ACE, the ACEs with their children, but I always kind of wondered where they, these children were sent if it wasn't to tri counties, because I think a majority of physicians were not tuned into this this program. Thank you, friend, that, and that that's really you know, uh, 30 years ago with with uh, Dr. Paul Russell, you know, and certainly he you know, did his best to, 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 to raise the level of awareness in the community, even to the point of going to the coroner's office and going, you know, some of those children uh, who uh, died of SIDS were exposed to, to drugs. And so, so as we become more aware, uh, I think as a society, we can help become more resilient too. So uh, uh, by offering our services as uh, mentors, as uh, if there's a troubled uh, a child or parent, uh, and uh, and incorporating this as part of your care, uh, God forbid, for a, a private pay patient, uh, that by being just a little bit more aware and and certainly the re the resources of mindfulness uh, uh, and, and other ways to decrease toxic stress, uh, having uh, uh, the the references uh, for uh, uh, behavioral health resources, but also for uh, uh, for housing and for. Uh, uh, 
payment protection, uh, all those things that are, that, are, that are stressing us and affect our health uh, uh, are available to every physician, every nurse practitioner, every PA, uh, and uh, uh, the state of California would be very excited for me to, to uh, uh, roll, this, roll this out. But we are going to concentrate at this point on Medi-Cal providers in terms of Amani and Mika. Great. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Fred. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and this will be available uh, along with other other lectures to come. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Uh, tomorrow's, uh, well, first of all, today's lecture, uh, it, I will Thanks send so out awful. CME evaluations <laughs> and so tests. Awful. If oh. anyone does not oh. receive oh. them, please contact me, so victoria.yushenkov at ventura.org. Tomorrow's lecture will be on COVID-19. We have an amazing panel lined up, and um, uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Um, as opposed to the best. As opposed to the best. Yes. So we use metamet and replace it with the best. No, we're not. So if you.